All right, today we are going to test this American Audio DB display Mark II. And uh, what I've done, I got it set up here on the bench with some various test equipment. Uh, what I'm going to do is we got a sine wave going into it. We're going to start with 1000 hertz. I've got that signal going into this mixer. And this will be my control for amplitude. I've got the output of this mixer feeding in to the unit to be tested. And then I've got the oscilloscope connected up over here which is showing us a level and right now I've got it set to 1 volt RMS and how we're going to check this is I worked up in Excel a spreadsheet of different DB levels and the corresponding voltage. Now although this is a quote power meter uh, you can't really measure power with one of these things it's uh, it's basically going to measure the output voltage of whatever you hook it up to. And then if you know the voltage and if you know the resistance of your load, you can figure out the power. But uh, So basically, just be aware, you can't truly measure power with this thing. It's just more of a voltmeter. Uh, this other amplifier here has got nothing to do with it. It's just sitting there. The bench is a mess, but if I wait to clean it up, I'll never get anything done. So... What I've done is, with the level going in there, I've adjusted these levels so it's just barely coming on. So that's calibrated to one volt. So right now I've got a thousand hertz going in. And you can see the RMS down there if it ever focuses one volt. So, if I adjust the voltage using this level meter, or I could also use this device, probably more accurate. If I drop it down 3 dB, let's see what happens. So if you look at the chart, we're going to go to 0.707 volts. So for now, I'll use this and we will change this down to uh, out there. That's pretty close. So did it come down? Yep, it did. One channel anyway. One still tickling. It's probably right on the edge, so. Yeah. Let me uh, recalibrate this. For minus three, it could be the issue. Alright, so. I was doing measurements on this thing. Doing some dry run stuff before I was going to actually uh, make the formal video, but I find that this display is so unbelievably inaccurate compared to what it should be that I'm not going to bother showing all that. Instead I have some data that I will show and uh, we'll go take a look at that. So I would say this device here, this thing right here, if you want it as a light show it's fine but for showing accurate output levels of an amplifier forget it. It's extremely off. Uh, for example, this down here is supposed to be minus 57 dB. If I remember right from my measurements, it's more like minus 16 dB. So 40-ish uh, dB off. Uh, it's extremely, extremely inaccurate. I cannot come up with any dB. I mean, it says dB. dB relative to what? What, I, it's beyond me. Nothing, no math I can do can explain the uh, behavior. What I think is going on is whoever designed the circuit internally has no knowledge of audio signals. Or they uh, just designed it mainly as a light show, or the, maybe they figured no one would ever actually check it out. Um, so, we'll, uh, we're going to conclude our lab test and uh, we'll go take a look at the data and then uh, we'll describe more what's going on. Alright so just out of curiosity I took the cover off of this thing. There's not really a whole lot in here. Board with LEDs as I kind of expected. Little circuit board right there. 
you can see the pots for adjusting it. But back in here, got your XLR connectors. There's some capacitors in there. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but that may explain why the uh, low frequency response is so bad compared to other frequencies. So uh, don't know that there's a schematic available for this thing, but it doesn't look like there's much smarts in it unless there's uh yeah there's some circuits in that board there i'd have to take that further apart but uh, whoever designed this uh it's definitely unless i got one that was defective which i suppose it can't be ruled out but uh i just don't see how it could work and yet be so ridiculously inaccurate so anyway that's kind of what it looks like inside. All right, so right now I have a spreadsheet that I put together that has all of the measurements that we did on the meter. So DB, this, this column here is just a listing of, goes by 3 dB steps from 0 down to minus 57 dB. That's what's on the front of that display. What I did here is relative to one volt, I had the spreadsheet calculate in volts uh, what it would be. Let me get rid of some of those decimal places. We don't need that many. That's fine. This is how many volts would equate to minus 3 dB and then minus 9, etc. Then in watts, I, got to say I should get rid of some of these. We don't need the decimal places that deep. So we'll get rid of some of that. Not that many recenter this stuff. This is how many watts it would be for that amount of power. And here is dB relative to 1 watt, which of course is going to match over here. So this, if you look at the formula up here, it's 10 raised to the power of whatever is over here divided by 20 for voltage. And over here it's, it's a little different because it's power, so it's uh, 10 log. Now, to get the actual behavior, what I did is at a given frequency, I used a thousand hertz, which is right in the middle of the band. I set the voltage, I calibrated it so that the top LEDs, the zero dB ones, come on at one volt. And then I backed the voltage down using the signal generator, which is quite precise in the steps you can generate. And I stopped it when these lights just came on. And I got 0.919, which it really should have been 0.708 from minus 3. So I kept doing that for each LED. I watched uh, the voltage, I changed the voltage down and then observed at which point these turned on. And then uh, I recorded all those numbers. So there they are. That's the actual measured data. Then I calculated in the spreadsheet using these actual numbers over here. If you look at the formula, 20 log 10 of whatever voltage here. And this is dB relative to a watt. So what I found was that at 0 dB, that's, that's our starting point. That's what I calibrated it to. But I found that even though the display... The lights silk screened on there say minus three they actually came on at minus 0.7 so that's about 2.3 th db off which uh kind of sloppy and then if you follow this down and look at this error it gets worse and worse and it gets extremely bad i mean 10 db 10 or 12 db that's pretty bad uh, that's i mean it's way off but if you go down more it gets up to almost 41 dB off. In other words, the display says minus 57. That's what silk screened right on the unit. But that light actually lights up at minus 16.1. So um, that's 40 dB higher than what that light is. So, and then if you look over here, this is the plot of the data. I didn't do any fancy labels. So here's dB this way. Now this blue line you'll see that it's uh, 
nice and uh, straight. However, look at the actual behavior. It, it deviates right away and then it gets wider and wider. So, I mean, this to me is insanely ridiculous. Uh, anything more than, I would say anything more than 3 dB of error is uh, pretty sloppy. But this thing, uh, the only step that's really anywhere close to being accurate are the first two. I mean, this this is a uh, terribly inaccurate. So I don't know what's going on in that circuit. It's definitely not following. In other words, what is displayed on it is definitely not representative of what's going into it. If you're uh, trying to use this thing for accurate levels coming out of an amplifier, uh, I wouldn't trust it. You can use it to indicate a peak level. It'll do that fine, but anything below that, uh, it's going to be way off. I guess for $80 or whatever this thing costs, uh, it's got nice build quality. I might be able to use it as a shell and build my own circuit and put it in there that it's where it's accurate. But I was kind of hoping they'd at least get this right. I mean, it's not a complicated circuit to design if you have an engineering background. I would say an honors high school student could probably do it. So whoever designed it, uh, if it was designed in China or over here in America, I have no idea. But whoever designed it uh, clearly has no understanding of audio levels. So, for whatever reason, it ended up this way. So, as a light show, a cool looking thing, yeah, fine. But for an accurate uh, display, nah, not accurate. Also, I found that the frequency response below about 50 hertz rolls off a lot. So, if you're planning to use this thing for subwoofer frequencies, it's going to be even more off. So, for example, if you have uh, some signal going in, at 50 hertz, constant level, and then you drop it to 30, the meter is going to drop, and if you drop it to 20, it's going to drop even more, even though you've got the same signal amplitude going in. So, highly nonlinear at low frequencies, so anything below about 50, uh, be warned. Uh, you could be putting a lot more power out than this thing is displaying. So, uh, without modifications, it's not going to work well for low frequency amplifiers. I did check it up to about 15,000 hertz, and uh, from 50 to about 15,000, uh, at any given level, it seems to be flat response, but like I said, the actual display LED light that lights up compared to what's actually going in uh, is pretty much a fantasy at most levels. So that's it. Hopefully uh, this review of this equipment was useful, and uh, we'll, we'll see you on the next review.